President uh, uh, Obama uh, is currently, uh, well, I think, visiting Japan. And when he was there uh, for dinner one night, he had uh, $300 sushi. Whoa. Yeah, and I know it's a lot of dough, but, you know, the chef did flip it into his hat. So that was... <laughs> and... Now, wait a minute. Hold it. Did I mention unlimited breadsticks? <laughs> And mercury poisoning is covered by Obamacare. Ah. <laughs> it's the Armstrong and Getty Show. Thanks very much for being here. Craig, the Obamacare lawyer, benefits consultant, uh, Craig Gottwalls, joins us live in studio. Hello, Craig. Good morning, Joseph. No delicious baked goods today. No, you know, my uh, my wife got up a little early this morning, turned on the radio right at 6 a.m., mm. realized Jack wasn't here, and yes. said, I'm going back to bed. Oh, my God. So, I wow. <laughs> well, you know what? Let's just leave <laughs> because what she that knows means that unspoken. The, she knows that the two men in this room with me are conscious of their weight. Oh, I see. Yeah. I, I know the feeling, Mrs. Gottwalls. So she's being... <laughs> She's being helpful. She's being uh, helpful. Whereas She's I not... was looking at it as an excuse to eat something I normally wouldn't. Yeah, well, yeah. I do too. By the way, Dominic, <laughs> this uh, this uh, this sheet you handed me with uh, Craig and the stuff he wants to talk about. Yes, it's not what he wants. To, it has nothing to do with Craig. I mean, it's it's about the marginal tax rate. What the hell is it? I have no idea. Um, you what you? It's from you. I, I will find out what I printed. I, it I, might as well be hints for training a German <laughs> shepherd. We're going to talk. Relevant. We're talking chindos, uh, goat castration, right? Excellent. That's, yeah, that's what that, I'm prepared for. Hey, listen, I, and I'm actually now I'm in possession of, of your notes here. But um, w- was it uh, which which uh, eastern state, Maryland, or um, one of the eastern states has abandoned their exchange? Oregon. Well, no, one of the Oregon eastern ones, yesterday. <laughs> Maryland, yeah, and Oregon, have they decided to go ahead and abandon it merely because, and I hate to see people give up too easily, merely because they have not successfully signed up a single person? Not one human being. Not has one human yeah. and being. I, I believe that was officially announced yesterday. The federal government was going to take over the Oregon exchange. Yeah. Wow. And there's a beautiful, um, I ought to tweet it out, there's a beautiful uh, YouTube commercial for the Oregon exchange, and it's it's literally themed after Portlandia. And then you wonder, gee, how did it fail? Wow. How did that not work out? Well, and do you have any idea how much money they spent on their exchange? Or You know, I don't. I don't it's, have that. It's got to be in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny here in California, it's roughly every six months it's announced that some $300 million, $400 million, $500 million uh, computer program has got to be scrapped, thrown away, just never worked, that sort of thing. And it's just, you just shrug your shoulders and move along and keep voting for big government. But. Nobody cares. I mean, nobody cares anymore. Uh, That's the... That's astonishing. But so anyway, uh, go ahead. Why don't you make point number one here on your notes about uh, our our friend Ms. Sebelius and and her recent announcements? Well, in March, uh, Secretary Sebelius was faced with a a pretty uh, daunting task. Part of Obamacare means that you have to actually um, define health care inflation year after year because they, they build an inflation number into the system. And then what that does is that allows for certain amount of premium increases, certain amount of copay, coinsurance, maximum out of pocket deductible increases to the users. Right? Okay. Right. So it's just part of the system. Congress granted her the authority, gave her this, and so she's got to do it. Well, in March, she did it. Uh, and it went out with absolutely no fanfare at all. In fact, the fanfare that came out was the opposite of the reality. But what she was looking at was a reality that health care increases across the nation were in the neighborhood of 12 to 40 percent, depending upon what market segment you're looking at, what zip code, what state, et cetera. Yeah. OK, that's a problem for her, because imagine if she were to come out really high, 40 percent at the worst case scenario well, and say that's horrific. Well, it would be it would be horrific. But imagine what that would do to Obamacare if you had it published out there that it's a 40 percent increase built into our system. And, right. you know, that would just kill the plan politically. Yeah. So she couldn't come out high. Uh, secondly, if you came out high like that, that would actually increase people's deductibles, uh, out-of-pocket maximums, et cetera, mm-hmm. that much. So, again, you don't want that, right, because all of that makes Obamacare less palatable. So she used some very, very, very creative government math to – selectively only pick the zip codes where, in in her words, um, 
the most stability in the healthcare market, which meant the closest to zero, oh, closest to zero percent increases. And there were so few of those zip codes that she supplemented it with federal internal data, which is completely disingenuous because that's relying primarily on Medicare and Medicaid, which is a federal system right. that just tells doctors what they're going to get paid and has virtually no increases built into it year after year. Wow. So it was beyond disingenuous sampling. It was. She com- just changed what she was sampling. She just completely made it up out of whole cloth. And, and frankly, Congress gave her that authority. I mean, Tim, the lawyer would love this because it's Congress saying there shall be no bad things. Secretary Sebelius, you make sure there's no bad things. And she did. I right. mean, it was it was administrative voodoo. So she come out and she said, we have an official health care increase. And, you know, if you were to ask me legitimately nationwide, I would say that increase is somewhere between 12 and 18 percent. OK. OK. Um, yes, some are as high as 40. In fact, some states are as high as 100 percent for individual policies. But when you average it all out with large employers and group plans, you come up with somewhere in the mid teens. OK, mid teens. What was the number she actually the number published issued. and that will be built into Obamacare and it will be built into the premium increases and the copay? Four point two percent. OK. Yeah. Okay, so a tiny fraction of reality. And guess what the headlines do? The headlines grab that. And you've seen a lot of them over the last month and a half saying health care inflation slowest in a decade. Oh. Right. Because right. the S- federal song. government's come out and said it's only four point two percent. It's completely disingenuous. And the reality is what the punchline that we we're getting to where this matters to us. Right. Is that means premiums will be artificially low. Which is great for users this year, right? This but, year. This year. But remember, we have guaranteed insurance company bailouts from taxpayers built into this law. Mm-hmm. So the insurance companies, they really don't care because they're going to be made whole anyway, and it's the taxpayers that are going to pick up this difference. Right. So if you say, well, Craig, how much did this cost? Uh, lo- very little data on this. The best actuarial analysis I read said probably 8 to $12 billion taxpayer dollars in middle of March in a small administrative thing that the news media just didn't even get. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Just faked up statistics passed on to the taxpayers. Yeah. And I actually talked to another guy. If you don't know who Craig is, by the way, if you haven't heard him before, you are not only attorney, an attorney, but you deal in uh, benefits for companies, health care benefits and other benefits. And so it's your, your, your duty to follow You know, the actuarial information, where rates need to be, what programs work, what don't. So if you don't know Craig, but that's just it's just so astonishing. And the media is so bad. It's very complicated in their defense. Not that I'm a big media defender, but this Mm -hmm. stuff is so complicated. And when you get into the weeds of how they build an inflation number into an Obamacare rider that inflate, it's. It's really tough for people to do it right. And the fact that, as you guys report, you know, news media, news, news, news units are getting cut and cut and cut. It's very tough for them to do right. it. And right. they don't do it well. I know one of your other points, and we've actually talked about this in the last week because we've gotten emails from folks this is already happening to, um, is that if you go for your medical checkup and you say, oh, also, I have a cough. Yeah. What do you hear from doctors? Yeah, that's a funny one. I've actually uh, we, we've dealt with that with employees for a, year, a couple of years now because it's been going on for a while, but it's getting more and more uh, it's getting more and more prevalent. So the deal in Obamacare is um, one of the talking points is your preventive care is free. I mean, that's that's how it's promoted. That's how it's sold. That's what you hear on the news all the time is your your physicals are free. You go right. in, you, you turn your head and your cough like. I know Vincent's excited to do coming up here. Um, it, it, that's free. They, they won't charge you for that, Vince, for that, that lovely cup, cupping they give Sweet. you. Uh, um, so as we know, nothing is free. All they did, all the insurance companies did to account for the fact that there could be no copay associated with your preventive visit is they built that into the premium. So all of us paid about 1% more in premium, right? Well, then you had the phenomenon occurring of people showing up at the doctor's office for that free visit mm-hmm. that, that there's no copay. There's just... Right. Higher, premium. And then they start talking to the doctor about whatever their goiter growing out of their neck is or whatever ailment they may have. Well, and the doctor, if they're worth a damn, would ask you, Absolutely. do you have any health problems? Absolutely. <laughs> right. And and the way that would get handled before Obamacare was you'd you'd have a physical visit and then you'd have a, a you'd, you'd have a follow up care visit at the same time. They would charge you one copay. They would bill you the coinsurance for both. And you'd pay that bill. No problem, because you mm-hmm. got that amount of care. The problem that's occurred is with all of the news media saying it's free, it's free, your physical's free. Then you show up for your physical. You don't think about the fact that you're talking about a goiter or a rash or whatever Mm -hmm. you've got. The doctor then has to code that into the more pressing need 
as follow-up care for an ailment, that takes precedent over the free visit, and yeah. now you have a copay associated with your visit. Well, what that did, that generated a lot of angry, confused phone calls from employees to HR departments, brokers, insurance companies saying, hey, my doctor charged me for my free visit, man. Right. right. And it, 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 trying to explain this to people is so difficult that what insurance companies have done as a response is to say, fine. You want to talk about anything follow-up, doctor, you make them have a second appointment. So the lunacy is you're still going to end up paying that $25 copay or whatever your copay is to to go and get your rash looked at when you could have done it all at one visit. It's a perfect example of no good deed goes unpunished. But don't worry. These bureaucrats, they're so smart. They will run all this, and they'll figure it out, and then everything will be great. Uh, Craig's going to hang around. We've got to talk a little more about the iceberg under the water of people who are going to lose their plans and be forced to go on these exchanges and and a lot more. Stay tuned. It's the Armstrong and Getty Show. It's the Armstrong and Getty Show. Jack is off today, spending time with the family. He's got his mom and pop in town, playing with little kids and stuff. Very, very wholesome. Meanwhile, here, it's policy. So, uh, Craig, we're talking about how uh, how ridiculously screwed up uh, Obamacare continues to be more and more while it gets less and less attention. If you're just tuning in, listen to the last segment on the podcast about uh, Kathleen Sebelius just making S up, as they say. Senator Sebelius, Joe. What? Future <laughs> Senator Sebelius. Oh, good Lord. God help <laughs> us. Um, so uh, I mentioned earlier the idea that we've only seen the tip of the iceberg of people being dumped from plans, particularly people who work for companies that offer insurance. But that's gotten a little more complicated, right? Who's yeah. going to get dumped and when? Yeah, the, 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 the dumpage has been ameliorated by the fact that the administration just keeps – they just keep extending things and postponing things, and now we're not Past going. elections. We're not. We're, yeah, we're not going right. to enforce the employer mandate for it a year for some companies and two years for other companies, and that was going to be the big impetus to push people off of those plans this fall. So right. I, I think that's that that burden is going to be lessened at least temporarily. And again, I'd go on the record as saying I think the employer mandate is effectively dead eventually, like the individual mandate is. Well, and the rub being that. The mandates, the various mandates, were absolutely necessary to prevent this thing from becoming an even more enormous uh, deficit maker, an enormously expensive transfer of wealth and everything. It it was portrayed as some sort of self-supporting thing that wouldn't be that expensive to taxpayers, partly because everybody had to sign up and employers had to do this. But anything that was politically unpalatable... Uh, all of which was uh, turns out is going to be on the revenue side, has just been canceled or put off or they're pretending it's not there. The president with his uh, infamous uh, executive orders changing the law as it's written. Um, so now the numbers, which never worked, now are farcical. I mean, it is absolutely a black hole of revenue. Yes, and it as we go month by month, you keep adding $5 billion here, $10 billion there, like we saw in March with Secretary Sebelius. It, mm-hmm. Obamacare is an unholy alliance of big business and big government getting together to do what's best for them. Right. And the problem is the same party that pushed it through that didn't really know what was in it is now having to live with it. And so they're peeling away all those parts that hurt them politically. And right. that's just making a bad law worse. Right. So um, it's funny. Gary Dietrich, our friend, just stuck his head in and, and was uh, saying, good job banging on the V.A. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and and there's a tie-in, isn't there? Talking well, about the failings of the VA. Yeah. I, I, as I was rolling into the studio this morning, I thought to myself, "Oh, I could hear Jack groaning. You're going to follow up the VA with Obamacare <laughs> oh, on a Friday, a yeah, rainy Friday. I know, I know. Fire up the margaritas. Guilty. Um, anyway, but there, you know, I I just can't help but make the leap of look. Obamacare is an unholy alliance. It's quasi-socialization. It's taking us in a direction. Why don't we have a true debate about what we really want to do here? We either want to, A, free up our health care system, or B, let's just go single payer. And, oh, by the way, you know, you can look to Canada, you can look to England for single payer, but you don't have to look that far. You can look at how America does single payer. Look at the last hour of your show in the VA hospital. There That's you go. what America, that is single payer in America. That is government employed physicians treating people. And um, if you like how that's working, then let's move that way. Wow. And, and and this is what makes me crazy. It's just you can't get the truth to people's ears. Sometimes they hear it and reject it. 
That's their right. That's the way democracy works. But it frustrates me that people never even hear a reality as stark as that. And they live in the world where unicorns gallop across the plains uh, pooping rainbows. And that the government, if we just create this enormous bureaucracy to run our lives, we'll all be happy and fulfilled. And I just I can't imagine what the world looks like through through those eyes. Um, Can we repeal it? You often hear yeah. people say, it's the law of the land, you can't repeal it, we're yeah. too far in. Yeah, they talk about, oh, we've got you know X million people on it now, you can't repeal this. That is such garbage. I, I, I cringe when I hear it, because remember, what this is is not single payer. This is an unholy alliance of big government and big business. So could you repeal it? Absolutely. You just keep the people that are in in. The insurance companies are the ones billing them and collecting payment anyway. They would continue to do that. You wouldn't get these be people happy out. To. Yeah. Right. It, it, it's you, the, the 8 million people, whatever that number is, that fake number that we know isn't that high, right. um, You just they would just continue to pay and they would stay in the system and they wouldn't get canceled. The law before Obamacare was not if you got sick, they canceled you. It was something very, very specific. HIPAA laws protect insurance companies from bailing people off of plans. So you have a guarantee of renewability once you are insured. The law, Obamacare's correction was if you actually lied on your insurance application originally, they could go back and take you off the plan. So what insurance companies were doing was waiting until you had a $100,000 claim, then auditing your application and going back three years and finding you had a pre-existing back injury you didn't report. Then they were canceling you. That was wrong. Mm -hmm. California actually fixed it before Obamacare ever came along. Obamacare fixed it in the other states. Fine. That was a minor fix. It impacted less than one half of 1% of the population. Population. For the rest of us, once you had a policy, you were renewed. Okay, we're in we're in the weeds now. But Sorry. Um, yeah. no, so how fake were those numbers that came out? That eight eight million number. Well, I I think uh, safely we can say probably four to five million. I think they're roughly fifty percent high. And then what I thought was incredibly interesting is when you drill down into the like you take one state like California for example, and you say okay. Of the X million people that are enrolled in California, how many of them are going to stay on the plan? There was a new analysis that just um, uh, came out from the Kaiser Foundation, the Kaiser Health Foundation, that said roughly half. We're going to have about half of the people that are in Obamacare today, You know, whether that number is 1 million or 2 million in California or whatever that mm-hmm. is, only half of them are going to stick. And that Why? caught my eye, and I started to look at it. 20% of them are going to get a job and go on their employer plan. 20% of them are going to see their incomes drop. They're going to go into Medicaid, which we had already. And another roughly 10%, I think that's low. I think it'll be more like 25%, mm-hmm. aren't going to pay their premium. Yeah. And so they'll get dropped off. Mm-hmm. So this system where we've got all these millions of people enrolled is really only going to hold about half of those people by the end of the year. Okay. So – um this this law that barely passed in the middle of the night on a strictly partisan vote, that nobody knew what was in it, it's absolutely repealable. And some of the more noble goals of Obamacare are absolutely doable with a targeted approach. I wish the Republicans could come together on a plan, but there's too much uh, disagreement. Craig, yeah. uh, we appreciate the thoughts. Um, keep us up to date and, well, you know, soldier on, I suppose. Thanks, Joe. Enjoy the rest of your health care Friday. Yeah, I'll keep uh, hiding my money in the Bahamas as I've been all yeah. these years. Fantastic. Marsha Phillips, what are our headlines? Well, Americans' views on political parties getting dimmer by the day. we got new poll numbers and gourmet toast is so yesterday. Foodies say get on board for cricket chips. Oh, God. And yes, we're talking insects. Coming up minutes from now, Armstrong and Giddy. Oh, hey, and uh, for the record, uh, it was not Dominic screw up. Craig sent us the wrong attachment on his email. It was a Craig screw up. Oh, my God. Uh-oh. How can we trust anything you've said today? <laughs> They're all lies. All right, so Dominic, is, is, he, was, he was fine. News is next. Stay tuned. Armstrong and Getty.